In a bustling town nestled between rolling hills and expansive valleys lived a woman named Miriam. Twelve years ago, her life had taken a dramatic turn. Miriam had always been a vibrant, energetic woman, known for her cheerful demeanor and tireless work in her family's vineyard. She enjoyed the sun on her face, the feel of the earth beneath her feet, and the satisfaction of a hard day's work. The harvest festivals, the communal prayers, and the laughter shared with friends and family were the lifeblood of her existence. But a mysterious illness struck her one fateful day. What began as a minor discomfort soon evolved into a relentless bleeding condition. The bleeding was not only physically debilitating, but also rendered her ceremonially unclean according to the laws of her people. This meant she couldn't participate in religious ceremonies, enter the synagogue, or even interact closely with her community. Her life of joy and social interaction was replaced by isolation and pain. The emotional toll was as severe as the physical. Miriam spent her days confined to her small, dimly lit home, the walls closing in on her as the years dragged by. The laughter and music from the village festivals now sounded distant and foreign. She often gazed out of her window, watching life go on without her, longing for the days when she could join in the communal celebrations. Chapter 2. Medical Efforts Determined to find a cure, Miriam sought the help of countless physicians. She traveled to nearby towns, consulting anyone who claimed they could heal her. Each visit brought a new wave of anticipation, only to be followed by crushing disappointment. She sold her family's heirlooms, borrowed money, and eventually spent every last coin she had saved, hoping against hope that one of these doctors might hold the key to her recovery. Some physicians tried their best, prescribing various herbs and concoctions, while others exploited her desperation, offering false promises in exchange for exorbitant fees. The treatments ranged from painful procedures to consuming foul-tasting brews. She endured invasive examinations, rituals, and remedies, each more exhausting than the last. Her resources dwindled as rapidly as her health deteriorated. Each failure left her more desolate, more physically and emotionally drained. Despite everything, a flicker of hope remained in her heart, whispering that somewhere, there had to be a solution. Miriam prayed fervently, her prayers often mingled with tears, asking God for a miracle. Yet, with each passing year, the weight of her condition grew heavier, threatening to crush that tiny ember of faith. Chapter 3. Desperation and Faith One day, as Miriam lay in her small, dimly lit room, she overheard a conversation between two women outside her window. They spoke with excitement and awe about a man named Jesus, a healer and teacher who had been performing miracles across the region. He had restored sight to the blind, made the lame walk, and even brought the dead back to life. The story seemed almost too incredible to believe, yet something within her stirred, a glimmer of faith she hadn't felt in years. Could this man be the answer to her prayers? Miriam's heart raced. If even half of what they said was true, Jesus was no ordinary man. He was a beacon of hope in a world that had grown increasingly dark for her. With nothing left to lose, she resolved to find Jesus and seek his healing touch. It was a decision born of desperation, but also of a deep, abiding faith that perhaps, just perhaps, she could be made whole again. Chapter 4 crowded environment. The next morning, Miriam mustered all her strength and set out to find Jesus. She had heard he was traveling through a nearby town, and she knew this might be her only chance. As she approached the town square, she was met with a throng of people. The air buzzed with excitement and anticipation. Everyone wanted to catch a glimpse of the man who had been the talk of the region. The crowd was so dense that it seemed like a single, living entity moving and swaying with a life of its own. Despite the crowd's size and her weakened state, Miriam pushed forward. Each step was a battle, but her determination was unwavering. She weaved her way through the mass of bodies, her eyes fixed on the figure at the center of it all, Jesus. He moved with a calm and purposeful grace, his presence magnetic and commanding. People were calling out to him, reaching to touch him, desperate for his attention. Chapter 5. Determined Approach Miriam's heart pounded as she drew closer. She knew she couldn't approach Jesus directly. The crowd was too thick and her condition too taboo. 
But then she remembered the stories she had heard. If he could perform such miracles with a word or a touch, perhaps all she needed was to get close enough to touch his garment. With renewed resolve, she maneuvered through the crowd, dodging outstretched hands and jostling bodies. She felt weak, almost ready to collapse, but she pressed on. Her eyes were fixed on the hem of his cloak, swaying gently with his every step. The fabric seemed to glow with a soft, ethereal light, and Miriam believed with all her heart that even the smallest touch could bring her the healing she so desperately needed. Chapter 6. Touching Jesus' Garment Finally, the moment came. Miriam stretched out her hand, fingers trembling, and brushed the edge of Jesus' cloak. It was the lightest of touches, almost imperceptible amidst the throng of people. But to Miriam, it felt like a lightning bolt of hope and faith. In that split second, she believed wholeheartedly that this simple act would change her life forever. Instantly, she felt a surge of power course through her body. It was as if a wave of warmth and light swept over her, washing away the years of pain and suffering. The sensation was overwhelming, almost otherworldly. She felt her muscles strengthen, her pain dissipate, and a sense of vitality return to her weary frame. She knew, without a doubt, that she had been healed. Her bleeding stopped, and for the first time in twelve long years, she felt whole. Chapter 7. Instant Healing Miriam's eyes filled with tears of relief and joy. She couldn't believe it. After so many years of suffering, she was finally free. Her body, once frail and weak, now felt strong and revitalized. She stood there for a moment, overwhelmed by the magnitude of what had just happened. The crowd around her seemed to fade away as she basked in the miracle she had just experienced. It was a profound moment of personal triumph, and she wanted to savor it, to let it sink deep into her soul. But her moment of private jubilation was short-lived. Jesus had stopped walking. He turned and began to scan the crowd, his eyes searching for something or someone. Miriam's heart skipped a beat. Had he felt her touch? Would he be angry? Fear mingled with her newfound joy as she watched him, unsure of what would happen next. Chapter 8. Jesus' Awareness Jesus' gaze was intense, yet filled with a calm authority. Who touched my clothes? He asked, his voice clear and steady. The question rippled through the crowd, causing a wave of confusion and murmuring. His disciples, ever practical, were quick to point out the obvious. Master, one of them said, you see the people crowding against you, and yet you ask, who touched me? But Jesus was undeterred. He knew that this was no ordinary touch. He had felt power go out from him, and he was determined to find the person who had reached out to him in such a profound act of faith. Chapter 9. Disciples' Confusion The disciples continued to look puzzled. How could Jesus single out one touch among the many jostling bodies pressing in on him? They exchanged bewildered glances, unable to comprehend the significance of his question. Meanwhile, the crowd began to quiet, sensing that something extraordinary had just happened. Miriam stood frozen, her heart pounding in her chest. She knew she couldn't hide forever. Gathering her courage, she stepped forward, her hands trembling and her voice quivering with emotion. The crowd parted slightly, creating a small space around her as she approached Jesus. She could feel the eyes of the crowd upon her, their curiosity and speculation almost tangible. Chapter 10. Woman's Confession Miriam fell at Jesus' feet, tears streaming down her face. She looked up at him, her eyes filled with a mixture of fear, gratitude, and awe. It was me, Lord, she said, her voice barely above a whisper. I touched your cloak because I believe that even the smallest touch would heal me. She recounted her story, the years of suffering, the failed treatments, and her desperate hope that Jesus could make her whole. The crowd listened in silence, their faces reflecting a mixture of pity and admiration. Miriam's vulnerability and faith were palpable, touching the hearts of all who heard her. She spoke of her isolation, her despair, and the countless nights she had cried out to God for deliverance. Her confession was raw and honest, a testament to her unwavering belief that Jesus was her last and only hope. The crowd, moved by her story, seemed to collectively hold its breath, 
waiting for Jesus' response. Chapter 11. Jesus' Affirmation Jesus looked at Miriam with deep compassion. His eyes, full of kindness and understanding, met hers as he reached out and gently lifted her to her feet. Daughter, he said, his voice warm and reassuring, your faith has healed you. The word daughter resonated deeply within Miriam. In that single word, Jesus had not only acknowledged her, but also restored her sense of belonging and dignity. For so long, she had been an outcast, but now, in front of the entire crowd, Jesus had claimed her as his own. Chapter 12. Faith Recognized Your faith has healed you, Jesus continued, his gaze never leaving Miriam's face. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. The crowd watched in awe as Jesus affirmed the power of Miriam's faith. It wasn't just her touch that had healed her, but the deep, unwavering belief that had driven her to reach out in the first place. Her story became a testament to the transformative power of faith, inspiring those who witnessed it to believe in the possibility of miracles in their own lives. Jesus' words were like a bomb to Miriam's soul. She felt the weight of her past lift, replaced by a profound sense of peace and joy. She knew that her faith had not only healed her body, but also her spirit, renewing her in ways she hadn't thought possible. Chapter 13. Peace and Wholeness With Jesus' words echoing in her heart, Miriam felt a profound sense of peace wash over her. She had not only been healed physically, but also spiritually and emotionally. The years of suffering and isolation seemed to melt away, replaced by a newfound sense of purpose and belonging. As she made her way back through the crowd, people reached out to touch her, to share in the miracle they had just witnessed. Miriam smiled through her tears, her heart overflowing with gratitude. She knew that her life would never be the same again. She was no longer defined by her illness, but by her faith and the incredible healing she had received. Miriam returned to her village, her story spreading like wildfire. She became a beacon of hope for others, a living testament to the power of faith and the compassion of Jesus. Her life, once marked by pain and despair, was now a story of redemption and renewal, a reminder that even in the darkest of times, there is always a glimmer of hope. The villagers, who had once viewed her with pity and kept their distance due to her condition, now welcomed her with open arms. They listened to her story with rapt attention, inspired by her courage and faith. Miriam's home, once a place of isolation, became a gathering spot for those seeking encouragement and strength. She dedicated herself to helping others, sharing the lessons she had learned through her own journey. She tended to the sick, comforted the grieving, and spread the message of hope and faith. Her vineyard, once neglected, flourished under her care, becoming a symbol of her renewed life. And so, Miriam lived the rest of her days in peace, her heart forever grateful for the miracle that had restored her body and soul. She cherished each moment, knowing that she had been given a second chance at life, a chance to live fully, to love deeply, and to walk in faith, knowing that she was never alone. Her story continued to inspire generations, a testament to the enduring power of faith and the boundless compassion of Jesus.